I guess I can say I had a good childhood, living in a small town close to the big city of New York. Even though it felt short-lived, I mean, our family was normal in a way. Even our house looked like all the others on our quiet street. My dad worked at a company that made computers, and my mom worked at the office inside the government building. I guess I got the silver hair from my dad's side, but I'm not sure about the pink eyes. My mom said that they were a gift from an ancient queen, but I never believed her. Mom and dad never worked late, so I got to be with them all the time, which wasn't a problem since I was an only child. I was only 16 when dad left. That night, I laid there in my bed thinking about the dream I keep having. I sat up when I heard the door close. I put my robe on and padded down the steps to find my mom in the kitchen crying her eyes out. Mom, can we talk? I asked. Rue, I didn't know you were still up. She smiled. I nodded and sat on the kitchen stool. I keep having the same dream. Dream? Yeah. In the dream, I'm talking to a boy with rabbit ears. I looked at her. She froze solid. How long have you been having them? Um, about four months. I see, she whispered. I frowned. Mom, what's wrong? Why is this happening again? She whispered. What do you... She grabbed a knife from the counter and attacked me. The blade sliced my neck, and when I tried to dodge it, I looked at her only to see that she was crying. Why was she doing this? It doesn't matter. I have to get that knife away from her. Rushing to her, I grabbed her arm and tried to take the knife, but she refused to let go. When I pulled back, she jerked forward, causing the blade to pierce her chest. A scream escaped my voice, and I fainted from the sight of blood. When I woke up, I was in a recovery room with stained glass windows, one giant metal door that led to somewhere and cotton beds. As I sat up, I reached up and felt a bandage on the right side of my neck. That's right. My mom cut me then. Tears welled up in my eyes, and a sob came out. Laying back down, I continued crying my eyes out, but stopped when I heard a sound coming from the bed beside mine. Rolling over on my side, I saw a boy laying there moaning. Excuse me? Are you okay? I asked. When he looked over at me, I felt a warmth run through my body, as if the sun was embracing me. He forced a smile and sat up on his elbow. I will be, he spoke lightly. I smiled. I'm Rue. Azul, he held out his hand. When I shook it, I looked deep into his emerald green eyes and saw a hint of honor. There was a bandage around his short, honey-colored hair. I tried not to look at the giant gash across his chest, which was bleeding through the cloth bandage. He tilted his head. So what brings you here? I sighed. My mom tried to kill me, but she didn't make it. Azul looked away. I'm sorry to hear that. I smiled. It's fine. So what about you? You seem to have a lot of scars. He chuckled and laid on his side. It's a very long story. I don't mind. I curled up. He smiled. Okay, then. I'm a soldier. The tear army took me in when I was a child and raised me to be a top-notch warrior. I fought in many battles and survived with few injuries. The tear army? I asked. Yes. Most people haven't heard of them. They like to keep to themselves. He smiled to himself. Please continue, I urged. He nodded. As a soldier, we have to follow the laws and the oath that we pledge to. If we disobey an order or direct command, they'll whip us into submission. A lot of my friends died from the beatings. His voice became a whisper. As Azul was talking, I felt calm and relaxed. I didn't know that there was such a feeling... His voice was just so alluring that it didn't feel real. I'm so sorry. That sounds awful, I muttered. 